zucchini noodles. They're the poster child of low carb pasta alternatives. But how do you make them and how do you avoid a watery mess on your plate? I'm going to show you all the tricks. Hi everyone, it's Maya from wholesomegym.com and I make easy, healthy recipes with 10 ingredients or less. And today, I'm going to show you how to spiralize zucchini noodles and how to cook zucchini noodles, not one, but two different ways. Let's see which one is better. And at the end of this video, I'll show you several healthy, easy sauces that you can use to dress up your zoodles. Let's do this. So first things first, how do you make zoodles from a zucchini? There are actually four different ways I'm gonna tell you about, but this is my personal favorite. This is the countertop spiralizer, and I actually tried several different brands before I settled on this one, and I'll tell you why as I make these. So I have 20 ounces of zucchini here, and that's about four medium zucchini. You do want to use small to medium zucchini here because those have less seeds than the larger ones, and so you're going to get better spirals. So the first thing you're gonna do is cut off the ends, and that's regardless of what spiralizing method you're gonna use. And then next, we're going to set up our countertop spiralizer. So this is why this one is my favorite. It has this huge suction cup on the bottom instead of some others that have these really small ones that just don't work as well. So go ahead and flip the switch here, which will help the suction cup secure to the counter. And then you're going to insert the zucchini. Just make sure that you insert it into the exact center of the ridge here, which is going to ensure that you have even spirals. And same thing on the other side, as you stick it into those little, I don't know what they're called, but make sure that's centered there as well. Now that you have it secured, super easy, it's just time to crank out those zoodles. Basically just keep rotating just like this, and there is a little handle on the other side that's kind of hard to see, but be sure you push that along to push the zucchini through the spiralizer. Now, what do you do with this little extra piece? You can throw it into a stir fry, but I'm not gonna get to that this week, so it's going in the garbage. The second method for making zoodles, and this is good if you have a small kitchen, is a handheld spiralizer. I used to have one of these, but it was really tedious to use and the zoodles that came out of it were really flimsy. So I'm going to be honest, I just threw it out. I don't even have one to show you, it was so bad. But if you really want one, I do have one linked in the description below. You basically kind of stick the zucchini in there and turn it and the zoodles come out. But again, not recommended. Third, if you want a small tool that works better than a handheld spiralizer, the one I think works a lot better is a Julian peeler. A lot of people have this in their kitchen so you don't have to buy something special and I'll show you how to use this. So just like the first method, the first thing you're going to do is chop off the ends of the zucchini. And after that, this is super simple. Hold the zucchini in your hand just like this and then slide the julienne peeler lengthwise to make those zoodles. They kind of look like they're stuck together at first but you can see they come apart very easily. Now the center has seeds so what you're gonna do is keep going until you start to notice the seeds and then flip it over and do the other side. And you're gonna do that along all four sides of the zucchini, that way you get zoodles with no seeds. That's actually one advantage of this method over the countertop spiralizer. The fourth method, and I'm not even going to attempt this because it's hard, it's tedious, I'm not good at it, but you can use a knife in a pinch. You'd have to slice up your zucchini super thin and then stack them on top of each other and slice in the other direction to make noodles. But again, it's hard to do, it takes forever, don't do it. So like I said, my preferred method is the countertop spiralizer, so I'm gonna go ahead and spiralize the rest of my zoodles using that method. Now, if you're using the countertop spiralizer, you might notice that some of these zoodles are super long. Easy solution, just trim them down before cooking. And I don't have a particularly scientific method for this. Ah, there it goes. Just kind of grab handfuls and trim any that seem long. If you have a better method for this, let me know. Okay, my zucchini noodles are spiralized and ready to cook. I'm gonna show you two different ways to cook these. That's why I made two batches. And the first method you're probably familiar with, it's gonna be cooked on the stove top but I do have some tricks for you to prevent these from being too watery. If you're observant, you might have noticed that I placed my zoodles into a colander after I spiralized them. The reason is because we are going to drain them over the sink, or in this case, over a large bowl works too, before we cook them. The way we do that is by sprinkling them with sea salt. You don't really have to measure it, just kind of eyeball it, and then use your hands to toss everything together so that they're all evenly coated in salt, and then let that sit for about 30 minutes. 
You'll notice after that, they're going to be a little bit softer and look at all that liquid that came out. This is coming out here instead of being watery in our pan. If you notice any additional long strands after draining, feel free to trim them as you go. And we're going to squeeze these just gently again to get rid of any excess moisture. Be careful not to squeeze too hard or your zucchini noodles are going to be mushy and lifeless. Now it's time to cook these on the stovetop. I highly recommend using medium high heat for cooking zucchini noodles because that will ensure that any moisture evaporates and they don't get watery. I'm melting two tablespoons of butter here because I love the flavor that it adds. But if you prefer, you can also use olive oil or avocado oil. Either way, go ahead and add the zucchini noodles to the pan after this and make sure that you don't crowd the pan too much. The amount you see here is a good amount, but if your pan is smaller, this one's pretty huge, then you might need to cook this in batches. And another tip, do not cover the zoodles while you are cooking them or they are going to get watery. These cook super quickly and you'll notice there's no extra water in the pan. One of the reasons for this as well is that I did not add salt or at least any additional salt until the end. This is when you wanna add it because salting right before is just going to make the zucchini release even more water. Or you can add a salty sauce instead after cooking. So the second method for cooking zucchini noodles is actually in the oven. That may sound a little strange, but the heat and the airflow, especially if you have a convection oven, but this works even if you don't, that actually helps to dry out the zoodles so that they're not going to be watery. The big advantage of the oven method is that there is no draining, no waiting, and no squeezing. The oven is just gonna do all of the work. So an important thing you're going to need is a really, really huge sheet pan. I'll link the one I use down below. I really like this one because it has the silicone coating and prevents sticking, but you do still want to spray with cooking spray just in case. So go ahead and transfer the zoodles on there and arrange them in a single layer just like this. It shouldn't be thicker than this or they are not going to cook evenly. And then just sprinkle them evenly with sea salt. Doing this beforehand is actually going to help them dry out in the oven since they're going to release that moisture and then the oven is going to just bake it away. Bake your noodles in the oven for about 15 minutes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit until they have an al dente texture. Or you can cook them for a little longer if you want them softer, but be careful not to overcook or they are going to get mushy. Be careful removing the zoodles from the oven because they are going to be steaming hot. The oven does a pretty good job of drying them out, but there is one more important step and that is patting them dry with paper towels. I like to use a double layer just like this and if you're concerned about them being too hot, you can wait a couple minutes first. But you'll notice the paper towels are absorbing quite a bit of moisture and this is going to ensure that our zucchini noodles are super dry, perfect for our sauce or whatever you wanna serve them with. I like to use this large turner to gather all the zucchini noodles into a single spot and then use tongs to transfer to a bowl. It is normal for the zucchini to release a little bit more water if you squeeze it with the tongs, so just be gentle with them. At this point, you can serve your zucchini spaghetti with your favorite sauce, but for a fair comparison with the other method, I'm going to add the exact same thing. Two tablespoons of butter and black pepper to taste. Notice this time I am not going to add any additional salt unless you feel like it needs it, because we already salted the zoodles before we baked them. And just to show you again, look at the bottom of this bowl. It is completely dry. No watery zucchini here. Okay, time for a comparison. We'll do the oven version first. These have actually been sitting here for a little bit. They are still good. No water in that bowl. And the stovetop version. Whoa, that's a long one. I guess I should have cut these down the size a bit more for the stovetop version. You can always trim them at the end too, if you like. And this was the simplest version of the recipe with just the butter, salt, and pepper, but I like a little Parmesan on mine. That was the stovetop version. I kind of did this backwards. So now the oven version. So which version is better? Well, they were both really good. You'll notice visually they are a little bit different. The stovetop version is a little bit brighter in color, whereas the oven version is a little bit more muted. But to me, it's just a visual thing. I think they both taste really similar. So which one is better really just comes down to convenience. The oven version is great if you wanna make a large batch because you've got that huge pan. You can even do two pans, one on top of the other and just rotate them if you wanna make a really big batch. 
The other advantage of the oven is there's no squeezing involved, which I always think is such a pain, so I'd rather skip it if I can. And even though the oven version cooks a little bit slower, the overall time you need is faster since you don't have to wait for it to drain in a colander for 30 minutes like you do with the stovetop version. The sauteed zucchini noodles do have their benefits as well. First of all, you don't have to turn on your oven, kind of obvious, right? Let's be real, zucchini season is in the summer, so that's a big plus when they are in season. And the second thing is, it can make an easy one pan meal. So you, if you want to add a sauce, you can cook the sauce in the same pan, then wipe down the pan and cook the zoodles in the same pan. Versus with the oven method, you've got the big pan, you've got another pan for the sauce. Something to consider in terms of cleanup. And as far as sauces, I promised you I'd give you some ideas. So my favorite is Alfredo sauce when I'm not making it plain like this. Or you can do marinara, pesto sauce, or even melt in some compound butter instead of the plain butter that I used in this zucchini noodle recipe. So you try out these two methods, let me know which one you prefer. And no matter how you make it, these zoodles go perfectly with sirloin steak.